Hello, welcome back to Snark and Spark, and today is another cross-stitch homework video. I'm going to be covering what is happening in Magical Stitches and the Daily 30 group. So let's start with Magical Stitches first, because I feel this is a lot more open and a lot more big, and I have a feeling that we're going to get a lot of questions on this one. So here we go. This is... Um, Series two, book three, task number two. This is the prophecy. Um, dear campers, we hope you enjoyed your rest week and your wounds are healing. This week we have quite a puzzle that you need to help us figure out. We have a new prophecy which needs to be interpreted. We would like you to use your reasoning skills to solve this puzzle. As always, if you do not have a project that fits the task, then use your oldest whip for the, for the task. Each task this week is 400 stitches. It is up to your interpretation. So it has to work. It does have to fit. You are allowed to interpret it however you see fit, but when you explain it, your explanation does have to fit. Um, there are six tasks. So six times 400 is what? 2,400 stitches? Like, right? That's a lot. Sure. So it is just the prophecy broken up. Let's let's go over this. Task one. Wisdom Wisdom's daughter walks alone. Okay. So when we look at each of these tasks, basically you can interpret it however you want, but it has to make sense. Maybe you want to focus on, and I will say that Vicky has pinned a post. I know at least in the demigods, I can check in the other groups, but Vicky, the head mistress, has or head camper camp director, I keep whatever, <laughs> um, has posted a pinned post, it is the very first post that you will see in the group where she has written down the tasks and it was where she is adding her um, her prompts and stuff to it. So, I'm going to go through this with what I've come up with so far. Alright, so task one, Wisdom's Daughter Walks On. What pops into head, my head for me is immediately anything with a young girl that you could be a daughter if you have or you have a mother and daughter piece that you are working on, um, things like that. I also, where it says walks alone, if you have images of people walking or things walking, that's where my brain goes. But also wisdom. Um, I'm kind of leaning on this because of Vicky's post is she used a person who is a writer explaining that you need to have wisdom to be a writer. So as long as you can make it fit, so you could really use anything for wisdom. Uh, it's a profession. You need to be you need to be wise to do X number X whatever profession or reading. You I could use one of my books because you know, reading brings you wisdom. Things like that. Two, the mark of Athena burns through Rome. So more specific, um, we don't know necessarily what the mark of Athena is, but it's up to interpretation. Um, you know there are definitely symbols of Athena. Owls, wisdom, she is the goddess of wisdom in war, things like that. If you have any mythology pieces, if you have a goddess piece, you could say that goddess is Athena. Um, burns, anything with fire or anything like that. Rome, cityscape, anything that would be found in Rome. <laughs> Three, twins snuff out the angel's breath. Anything with twins. Anything with angels. Anything that is a breathing, that is what Vicky used, that there is a lion breathing in one of her pieces. So that that can also be pretty much anything. You can say that as long as it's a living creature, it breathes. Number four, who holds the key to endless death? Anything with a key? It has to have a key on it. Um, oof. I'm going out on a limb here with, for me, when I see endless, I think infinity, I think time which means clocks, um, any sort of timekeeping, obviously death, anything, this would be a good Halloween piece where you've got, um, you know, spooky, we've got ghosts, the ghosts of dead people, vampires are undead, zombies are undead, um, your coffins, your creepy, your creepy pieces, use your Halloween pieces for that one, um, and tie it to death. Task five, giant bane stands gold and pale. Um, this I think you could also work a number of ways. Um, 
I think giant, I don't necessarily think of having a piece with giants in it, but I think what is your biggest piece? What is your giant piece? And I think this one would have to be your like, your bands, you know, your big, <laughs> you know what I mean? Your big booty. The, your big booty ones, the really big, your your giant pieces. I'm thinking Harry Potter because it's huge. It's on like its own thing of fabric. Um, any of your pieces that is definitely bigger than large. If you need a refresher on how to calculate the size of your whips, cat is coming. Um, it is in our like files in the main group on how you figure out the size of a whip. Um, do 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 do. I would say if you have anything that has gold in it, gold thread or like it is you know, gold jewelry um, would work. You could even stitch in gold. If you have 400 stitches in gold, have at it. And for me with pale, I would even attempt, because I can also be psych psychotic, not psychic, but psychotic enough to go, okay, I'm only going to use colors that have the word pale in the name. like very pale light blue i don't know if that's actually a color but i'm only going to stitch in colors that have pale in their name and finally number six one through pain and a woven jail so anything with winning with races or first place trophies things like that um pain is kind of an interesting one my brain jumps to pain and panic from hercules but i'm also on a hercules kick right now um, woven, anything that needs, that is woven, webs, um, any, like knitting, crocheting, things like that, um, jails, same thing, anything that could be considered a prison, um, it doesn't have to be a literal prison, you know, again, all of this is up to interpretation, we wish you all the best. Now, please keep in mind, my final word, Washington agrees, <laughs> This is not this is not the final word on anything. What I say is not necessarily sanctioned by Vicky or anyone else of the admins. This is me sitting here interpreting it for you um, to try and help possibly prevent some questions that are going to be popping up if I can help. Ta da! So that is that for magical stitches. So if that's all you're here for, I understand. Um, Postcard week is happening over in Cross Stitchers Daily 30, um, which I didn't know this, so this is a cool thing. Postcard week runs from the 15th of October through the 29th of October, so it started on Friday, and it will go until next Friday. Although many earlier attempts had been made, the first official postcard was sent on October 1st, 1869 by Dr. Emanuel Herman in Austria. The postcard, a piece of beige cardstock measuring eight and a half centimeters by 12 centimeters with the address on one side and the message on the reverse, cost half the price of a regular letter to send, and the postcard was born. All right. Looks like everything is either 200 or 300 stitches or two hours or three hours. Number one, the main purpose of a postcard is to convey a message, stitch on a whip with a verse or words, not just an alphabet. So not necessarily a sampler, it has to actually have some sort of writing on it. Um, and it says words, plural, so I'm going to bet you can't just have one thing. It needs to be a string of words. Cat is back again. Postcards, two. Postcards and their stamps are widely collected and an early postcard sold for a record, is that pounds? Ooh, 31,750 pounds in 2002. No idea what that is in dollars or any other currency. Sorry. Um, stitch on a whip that contains something you might collect. For three bonus tokens, tell us about something you collect that is not stitching related. Okay, this is fun. Something you might collect. People collect rocks. People collect everything. Books, rocks, paintings, puzzles. People, no, don't collect people. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, we collect baseball cards. We collect memorabilia, anything like that. Um, maybe you collect Harry Potter souvenirs. So, like, I'm thinking Harry Potter piece because I could say, you know, we're big on collecting 
Harry Potter wands or whatever. Now, my fun thing said is something I do collect that is not stitching related. I think I've mentioned it like once or twice. I collect decks of playing cards. There, I have a lot. I have many, but I'm always, always, always looking on the lookout for new decks of cards and unique decks of cards. Um, I just love them. And they're so much fun. And I always get really excited when someone brings me a new deck of cards. It doesn't matter if I already own that deck of cards. I just love owning decks of cards. It's really cool. I own some pretty neat ones. Go into that some other day if you're interested. <laughs> Number three, the divided back postcard became standard in the early 1900s, allowing an image to be printed on one side and then have a space for a message and the address on the reverse, stitch on a whip that has two parts or is divided in some way. Any sort of cereals, any sort of salves, anything that has borders or blocks and is separated. Four, the Treaty of Bern in 1835 allowed postcards to be sent internationally. Stitch on a whip that uses something, fabric, floss, or pattern you have received, purchased, or been gifted from outside your country of residence and tell us the country it was sent from. Okay, basically use something that is from a different country than your own. Okay. So if you bought a pattern from England and you live anywhere else, <laughs> um, what pops to mind for me is I have the um, the 100 Owls um, from Owl Forest Embroidery, I think that's it. I went ahead and bought their floss and their like, no, I bought my own fabric, but I bought their recommended floss from them and that came from... Russia, I want to say. Um, I also have a Stitchonomy kit, the Halloween storybook Stitch Along from this year. I bought the kit and everything from her, and she sent that from the Netherlands, Switzerland. I'm really bad at knowing where that is. Sorry. <laughs> um, number five, in order to re reduce production costs and make them easier to cut up, early American postcards had a white border. Stitch on a whip with a border. Pretty generic, easy to come up with. And the number six, as per usual, is the non-counting challenge where we encourage everyone to stitch for 30 minutes a day, every single day on a project of your choosing. Um, again, I'm inviting you to do that. I have not been doing very well with it. Um, I need to get back into it, which is why I'm definitely toying with the idea of introducing a fifth whip into my rotation. Um, doing doing having my four whips that I use for a zombie run but then having that fifth whip that I can work on every single day that needs just needs a little bit of love um that would be good to use for daily 30. that's all I got I'm going to wrap this up here I just want to do a quick homework video hopefully to help some of you out especially with magical stitches this week since it is very open it is rather vague. We have not given you any specific prompts or tasks, and it is all open to your interpretation. So please have fun with it. Good luck. Don't worry yourself too much. Just tell us a story. Be creative, be imaginative, and let your whips work for you. So um, I am going to end that here. I will see you all very, very soon. In the meantime, happy stitching, happy reading, happy watching, happy listening, happy doing whatever it is that makes you happy doing. <sighs> Be easy with your heart.